time again for a uh, another amazing episode. We're going to jump in. I'm changing my background because I want you all to make sure you all can see. Uh, I got a sponsor on here. I want to make sure we get recognition to that was on there from the beginning, but it, uh, it popped off for some reason. So listen, Kevin Lloyd here with ColumbusBlack.com. It's that time again. It is Throwback Thursdays, right? And I think you all know what we do on Throwback Thursdays. We have our Support Black Business series where we highlight and showcase Black-owned businesses uh, and those business owners. But what we've done uh, this year with our 2021 lineup that's made it even more exciting is we introduce Artist Voice, right? So this is a showcase of our local artists, and uh, that gives us an opportunity to balance the business with art as well. As you all know, we're focused on commerce and culture. So with that being said, tonight we're going to have two amazing individuals that are going to be joining us, that are going to be sharing a little, about, a little bit about who they are and what they do. Before we get started, for those that are new to this, ColumbusBlack.com has been around for 15 years, almost 16, next month. And we're really excited about that because obviously a lot has changed and so have we, including our 2021 lineup and, uh, and what I mentioned earlier, including all this voice and us using our Support Black Business Series and highlighting Throwback Thursdays now. But with that being said, we are an omni-channel platform connecting the Black community to commerce and to culture. The commerce side is focused on business, like what we'll be talking about tonight. The culture side is another part of what we'll be talking about tonight, but that's the entertainment, the lifestyle components. That's how you know what's going on here in the capital city. And fortunately, because of the virtual piece, we've been able to do these type of interviews and really help expose and educate our audience and our listeners to a lot of people doing great things in our community that we can support, hence support Black Business Series, right? So with that being said, I wanna give everybody an understanding of where you can find this information, right? So make sure you go to ColumbusBlack.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on LinkedIn, right? So you never get a chance to miss out and make sure when you go to our website that you join our mailing list. If you need to advertise, that's what you do. We can get the word out there and promote your business, your events, your activities, whatever you have going on. Now, with that being said, it's time for us to transition into our special guest for tonight. So we're gonna start with our artist voice. And we have this wonderful young lady with us tonight by the name of Claudia Owusu. So Claudia, I wanna welcome you to ColumbusBlack.com's artist voice for this segment. And uh, we wanna make sure that our audience gets a chance to learn a little bit about you, what you have going on. Uh, and the skills that you are bringing to us in your form of art. So I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself real quick and then we obviously have some questions for you. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Um, yes, my name is Claudia Wisu um, and I'm a Ghanaian American filmmaker and writer based right here in Columbus. Um, I've been making films for about the past four years but I've been writing since I was in fifth grade and. Um, I often write a lot about Columbus and then also Ghana as well. So those two spaces really define who I am as an artist. Thank you for having me. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. All right, very good. And then we also have with us tonight, we have India Latham. So India, would you mind introducing yourself to our audience as well? Yes, good evening, Columbus Black. Thank you also for having me again. My name is India Latham with Flavor Sweets. Um, I own a breakfast and brunch catering company um, that specializes in all things breakfast and brunch. So thank you again for having me, Kevin. I am happy to have you. And I'm just trying to get to some of that food. Uh, breakfast and brunch, my favorite. So we're going <laughs> we're gonna to come back to, to that shortly. So before we, uh, as we, as we go from there, Claudia, we're going to go back and spend some time um, to, to get to know you a little bit better. Now you said since, did you say fifth grade? You yeah, know? I've been writing since fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, outstanding. So do me a favor for our audience, for those that don't know you, tell us a little bit about your writing. And then what I want to know mm -hmm. more than that, as you lead up to it is, when did you start like in, and what triggered that for you, right? So it was fifth grade, mm -hmm. but like, what was the trigger to get you to continue? And then we want to obviously walk through the progression that you've had as well. Yeah, of course. Um, I moved to America with my family in 2007. And so back then, um, like my father would work all the time and because he worked all the time, he would just drop my siblings and I off at the library. And that's sort of like where all the immigrant kids hung out, like Northern Lights Library. Um, and so it was just sort of such a formative part of our lives at that point, just checking out books, returning the books, checking them out again. Um, and then when I was in fifth grade, I had a really great English teacher who always wanted 
um, me to read or like was always like recommending books for me. And then also um, the librarian at the school, Cassidy Elementary actually, um, was just always very engaged in like what I would write or like what I would say on the page. I feel like those two people really shaped like my desire to start writing. Um, and I think too, like when you're an immigrant in a new place, you're kind of like still trying to find your voice. And so reading was the space where like I could find characters like myself who were like in the in-between stages and trying to find their grounding. Um, so from then on, I was just like, okay, maybe I want to give this a try as well. Um, and then with time, I just started writing my own pieces. Wow, 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 very interesting. Mm -hmm. So now here's the deal, this happens all the time. In, in India, this is a heads up because you're gonna do the same thing, everybody does. <laughs> You just gave us like a whole lot in a short amount of time, right? And it's, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's so much that's baked in there. And I took away some things, right? Um, obviously, you know, relocated here, um, building kind of a, a, I guess, a family type environment, right? At the mm -hmm. library. But I picked up that you were supported in certain ways that helped to guide, yes. you, right? And that's yeah. a part that, you know, we talk about on the show and people who don't realize that you know, you have an impact on other people's lives and you may not realize it, especially mm -hmm. our youth, right? They're so impressionable and we can have such an impact. So, so walk us through. So you, you ended up with some support. You were doing a lot of reading yeah. and that kind of triggered it. Right. But mm -hmm. then it turned into more. How did, how did it turn into more? And when did you know, mm -hmm. like, this was, this was me, like, this is my passion, what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, so my fifth grade teacher, her name is Miss Berman. And then the librarian, the school librarian, um, her name is Miss Kelly. And so with Miss Kelly, with Miss Kelly specifically, um, every time we have like library, she would always have like a new book that she would mm -hmm. suggest for me to read specifically. Um, and then I think too, like at that time she was getting married. And so she asked me if I could write a poem for like her wedding. And it was just really kind of like jarring to have her invite mm -hmm. me into this very intimate, personal thing. And to think that like my words were important enough Wow. right to be part of like her big day in that way and so um just her asking or like her even taking that interest in me really made me rethink about you know what exactly I was contributing um so I just feel like all throughout from like elementary school to middle school to high school to even undergrad English teachers and just people in my community have been like the common thread to my success, um, whether they've just been there to listen to me or, you know, just being around to lend their own stories to inspire me. Um, I feel like my community, they help me to rediscover myself each and every time again. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like that has been the biggest, above all else, the biggest influence and the biggest thing that like my creative passion is based upon. Wow, that's awesome, awesome, awesome story. So listen, y'all, one of the things that I do during the show is uh, every now and then our users, our viewers are getting used to me doing this, right? And what that means is you are dropping gems. So every time you drop mm -hmm. gems or drop knowledge, I start doing those, right? And I may not say anything, but everybody knows that means you're dropping gems. Now, here's the deal. Versus it just being knowledge, she was sharing some really powerful information and those would be considered gems. And it goes right back to that support along her entire way so thank you for dropping those gems because there are people who are in that role. There are teachers right now that sometimes mm -hmm. feel like they're not making a difference, right? Mm -hmm. There are supporters, there are people in your community that feel like I'm saying something to, to this young person is not making a difference. Mm -hmm. And Claudia is showing us it is making a difference, right? So never believe that the things you say, the things you do and how you support someone doesn't have an impact on their lives and what they, who they are and what they can become. So that's, that's pretty exciting. So now you went from, okay, I'm writing to filmmaker, doing documentary. So yeah. walk us through the evolution of, your, of that growth and then talk to us yeah. about like the genre of, of writing now to help us understand like where, mm -hmm. what's your sweet spot? Yeah, of course. Um, so with film actually, it was very unexpected, um, but that came out of like my undergrad. And again, another really involved teacher in my life. Um, my undergrad professor, Dr. Kohler, Dr. Margaret Kohler, there was like a symposium at school and she was just like, Claudia, like you should do something. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. So I was really just dodging the matter all in all aspects. Yeah. Um, but then she just kept like encouraging me and on the list of like media that you could present, it could be like a PowerPoint, a film, mm -hmm. you know, an essay, a poem, et cetera. Um, and so with that, 
you know, it was a symposium about like race and privilege. And so you could do anything from like black blackness or just anything you wanted to talk about. So at that point I was really interested in like being a black woman on a white campus. Mm -hmm. um, and also just like the politics of my hair and so automatically, like everything I kept seeing was like film, you know, like shots of like my friends in the library, people reaching into their hair. Um, so I immediately like borrowed a camera and was just like running around campus, literally like edited it together within like a couple of days, like one weekend almost, um, shared it. People didn't like really understand it, but they could like you know, just feel for me, I guess, you know? Okay. Um, and so just from that, I ended up posting it on face on um, YouTube, sorry, yeah. um, thinking completely nothing of it. Mm. Um, and then like with months, it was just racking up views and people were just like commenting, engaging with it. Mm. And even till this day, like I'll just be living my life and then like another YouTube comment and it has like over 25,000 views now wow. with like people just in the comments going back and forth about like black hair and their experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And so it just, completely blew my mind that like if Dr. Kohler had not said Claudia go present at this thing I would have never picked up a camera I would have never like stepped into documenting mm -hmm. my experiences as a black woman and yeah. also let alone like documenting my community so it always feels like a domino effect like because someone speaks into me or like yeah. speaks positivity or like throws out an idea um, and believes in me then I pick it up and then I'm able to sort of like you know, redefine what that means for myself. Um, yeah. And so from then on, I just kept looking around at Columbus. Um, I love Columbus as a community and as a place. And it has shaped me and my family has lived here, as I said, since 2007. Yeah. Um, and so I was really in intrigued by like the African community in Columbus. Um, I went to Mifflin High School. And even while being there, there were like Somali Americans, Kenyans, Ghanaians, Nigerians, and we would all be sitting at like our own separate tables. But like, we would be like saying hi to each other in the lunchroom and just like cackling and laughing and, and making jokes. So it just felt like Columbus has this way that like the immigrant community moves that's really intimate and like intricate in an important way. Um, so I just felt like documenting, it felt like other people needed to see this, people who weren't in that circle needed to know that this is happening and, and it's magical when we gather together. Um, and so, yeah, from then on, I um, went to Ghana for the first time and made a film about what it's like to return home. And then I came back to the U.S. a month later and worked with another friend who's Nigerian. Her name is Ife Oluwamuyide, and we um, collaborated on a short film called My Daughters, mm -hmm. which basically highlights the experiences of an immigrant mother and her daughters. Um, and then since then, I've also worked on my own documentary film called Don't Mess With My Kitchen which really okay. thinks about the role of young African women within the kitchen or just like black women in the kitchen and the kitchen as a space that can either be like over-policed for black women mm -hmm. or a space where like black women can just fully express themselves. And that's why I'm so glad to see India on here because I'm just like, yes, another black woman, <laughs> um, you know, who's in a way affirming this project yeah. um, that I'm really interested in at this point since India is a chef as well. Um, so yeah, like I'm just, I just feel like it's just been step by step and I could have never imagined being here, but it feels really great to be amongst great people. Yeah. That is outstanding. Outstanding. So, uh, what a powerful story, right? And I see India shaking her head, right? So, uh, I'm dropping all of these because you were dropping some serious gems and telling your story, which is powerful. So I'm curious, I was going to ask you about, uh, the year of the return, right? So yeah. now, did you do your your film before then or was that last year? I actually did my film before the year of the return, which is interesting <laughs> because I felt like when the year of the return happened, it was just in a way I felt like it still fed off a lot of the themes that I was thinking about as a black person in the African diaspora. And yeah. so it felt it felt in a way like really good to see that I wasn't the only one who felt that way. And when people were returning home, you know, whether it be they were like African American or just Africans who had moved. Um, it was just like, we are all these things, you know, and we all feel the same things and we come from the same things. Um, yeah, so it just felt like I belonged in a sense, yeah. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, listen, it sounds like uh, a lot of your motivation has come from support and, uh, and then you putting your own spin on it. So at yeah. this point in time, before we even wrap up, 
I just want to say I support you. I'm asking our entire community, our Columbus Black community, Thank to you. support you, to keep cheering you on. I'm going to ask you in a moment how we can follow you and support mm -hmm. you and all those things. But I want you to keep going. You have such a Thank powerful you. spirit and you're doing some Thank amazing you. things. And I don't want you to ever slow down. OK, Thank keep you. telling your story. Keep expressing that to us and keep impacting us in a positive way. All right. Thank you so much. You are more than welcome. Thank you so much. So with that being said, so for those that are like, OK, I have to go check Claudia out. Where do they yeah. go? How do they find you? <laughs> um, so you can find me on Instagram under looking for and then Anaya, N-A-N-A-Y-A-A. -A -A. Um, and then I have a website, Claudia Owusu. Um, dot squarespace dot com. You can find me on YouTube at Claudia Owusu as well. Um, and actually, in a couple of weeks, I will be launching a Kickstarter for a new documentary project I'm working on about Black girlhood and childhood games. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so please support that. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook um, to keep up with that Kickstarter and donate or share with whomever you may know. That's phenomenal. So two things that I want I want to do there is uh, actually three things. The first one is if you're watching this show live right now, later on today, tomorrow, next week, I want you to make sure that you share it. That's the first thing. Like, click like, and I want you to share it so we can spread this word, right? This is a digital footprint. There's no excuse. This is support black business series, right? This is what we do. It's called Throwback Thursdays. Why? Because it's how it used to be back in the day when we supported each other. We need you to then support Claudia's efforts, right? So follow her on her channels so then you can support and contribute toward this documentary, right? And as you all know, when you do a Kickstarter, it's different levels. So you can't be like, oh, I can't do $5 or $25, right? It's not a lot of money. Every little bit counts, right? So make sure you keep that in mind to really help the sister continue to do great things, okay? So moving on from there. So that's how they can find you. Now, if there was outside of the Kickstarter, if there was one thing we could do as you wrap up, one thing we could do as a, as a community to support you, is there anything else you would want from those that are listening to this show at any point in time? Yeah, um, I think one big thing is collaborations. Um, I'm always here and I'm always open and willing to collaborate and to learn. Um, Issa Rae talks about how sometimes you try to look at people who are like above us but we should be looking at people who are beside us. Mm. Um, and so I'm definitely yeah. interested in that and passionate about that. Um, just really meeting more creatives in Columbus across career fields um, to just really connect and build with, yeah. Outstanding, outstanding. All right, so listen, she's willing to collaborate, okay? Y'all better go ahead, right? Take advantage of the opportunity, all right? She's here, very talented sister, doing great and amazing things. So excited to hear that because guess what? We are stronger together then divide it. We need everybody to understand that, all right? So thank you for dropping those gems as well. And then the last and final thing I have for you is every show, people would decide they're gonna come on the show and they say, I may, I wanna talk about this. And then they forget and they're like, ah, I can't believe I forgot it. I went on the show, I didn't say it. Is there anything that we may have missed? If we didn't, it's fine. But is there anything that you wanted to say tonight that you wanna address before you drop off? No, I feel like I've said everything. Above all else, I just love to tell stories and I'm just really interested in the Black women's experience all over the world. Very interesting. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So thank you so much for sharing that. And what I'll thank say you. is, you know, we just did a Wellness Wednesday yesterday and we had Jamie Blunt uh, from mm -hmm. Brown Girls Mentoring on yesterday. Um, obviously we have India on today. And we'll continue to have a number of sisters on this show. And I'm just going to say, what an opportunity to connect with Claudia uh, for some amazing collaborations uh, where everybody can grow and everybody can win. That's, that's exceptional, yeah. all right? So listen, we know that you have some other things going on tonight. So we appreciate yeah. you joining us. Feel free to drop off whenever you choose to as we continue with the segment. Um, but I really, really appreciate you coming on. I want to thank GCAC. Um, and Columbus Makes Art, who's a sponsor for Artist Voice, which is a reason why we're also able to do what we're doing to showcase our local artists like Claudia. So what an awesome opportunity and thank you so much for what you're doing and we will be supporting, all right? Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, India. Thank you so much, all Bye. right, good stuff, y'all. So with that being said, y'all understand why I love doing this, right? 
So these experiences are amazing. The people that, that come on the show and the things that they share um, is just so overwhelming sometimes in a positive way and it keeps us going. So thank you all for your support. Make sure you hit that like and that share button. Tag somebody who needs to hear that story. And we're about to transition in. So with this part of the segment, the Support Black Business Series, this is actually sponsored by the Ohio Small Business Development Centers at Columbus State Community College. And we thank them for their support and all that they're doing to help businesses, right, to be more successful. So if you need advisory services, excuse me, free, F-R-E-E, -E, advisory services as a small, uh, small business, that's where you want to reach out, okay? Ohio Small Business Development Centers at Columbus State Community College. You can see the information on our website at columbusblack.com. So with that being said, India, it's showtime. So we started, you, you mentioned breakfast and brunch, right? Exactly, yes. I'm still hungry. So, <laughs> uh, so let's do this. Do me a favor. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and the business and how you actually started the business, right? I, wanna, I want us to make sure we understand the backstory of what you have going on. Okay, yes. So breakfast and brunch. I didn't start at breakfast and brunch. Mm. because you know food is very general so I'm going to take you back so okay. when I was okay. um, in my 20s a single woman mm -hmm. on, on my own um, I like to say that I took the um, I have a de degree in the food network tv right okay <laughs> I would absorb myself in um, the likes of like down home with the Neelys mm -hmm. Rachel Ray um, the two fat ladies, Giada okay. De Laurentiis, Barefoot Contessa. And I was just in the kitchen learning and cooking and just doing everything that I wanted to do. And I really learned to love the culinary arts. It was just something that I would find myself um, at work, like creating menus and recipes and different themes for events. And I would go to like, just like Claudia, I would go to the library and go get cookbooks and just create and learn and make mistakes. And um, as I started to um, navigate, I developed the business flavor suites. And for a long time, I sat on it. I didn't know what to do with it because I'm like, okay, I love food, but now what? I'm not right. trying to, you know, I'm not a salesperson. I don't know where to start. So I just really just kind of developed it over the years. And it's only since been the past few years that I created that niche because you have to really find your lane in any business. Mm. And my lane was the breakfast and brunch industry. Why? Because I love breakfast. It's my favorite meal of the day. Okay. Um, I can eat any time of the day. And it's something that can be trendy, but it's something that will never go away. And um, yeah, so that was really how I got started. And it's something that I have, my business model is something where I can brand it to where I can be doing it for a long time coming. Okay, outstanding, outstanding. Thank you for breaking that down. And the thing about it is, I know that there are a lot of other foodies out there that are going through some of those same experiences that you mentioned, right? Between the food shows, between the books, between being in the kitchen and all of that. So really exciting that you took that and you figured out like, how do I want, what do I want to turn this into? So, but what I'm going to ask you is that it is not just, for your situation, but all entrepreneurs go through this. Figuring out the first step, right? Because you didn't know what to do with it at first. How did you, like, what was the decision? Like, when did that light bulb go off? What did it take for you to basically be able to figure it out? That's an important piece I want to I want to understand. You know, for me, um, because I did sit on it for a long time and I would share it kind of like really shy with people like, yeah, I have a business. Um, you know what I mean? So I was not, I, I didn't know what to do with it. But, you know, I had people in my life um, that was like, you know what? I want you to do this for me, right? I want you to cater this event for me or I have a birthday coming up. You want to do it? And I learned on, as I went along what I liked, what I was good at. Um, how to, you know, really build up my confidence because I did not have a lot of confidence in what I was doing at first, but I had people in my life just to kind of believe in me when I really did not believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And it really just takes a lot of trial and error, just really doing it. You just have to just do it mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. stick to it because what happens with a lot of businesses when you don't see a lot of growth or success, then you start to pivot like, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. When you have a business, it's like a garden. You have to water it. You have to seed it. You have to give it some light and you have to be very consistent because if you don't um, focus on that, on the little steps every single day, 
you're going to feel discouraged because you feel like you're not making an impact when okay. it starts really, really slow and you really have to be patient and get that audience because when you have a business, you don't, you're not going to uh, garner your a whole audience. You have to figure out who your audience is. It may not be your friends and family, right? It may not mm-hmm. be your friends. It may not be your coworkers. It may be a whole nother demographic that you really have to cater to because of what your business sells. So I would just say, um, just do it and start. From, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to just be consistent and be yourself because for a long time, I tried to kind of paint an image of who I thought I wanted to be when in actuality, yeah. people want to see the real me, the Ooh. mom India, the mm-hmm. wife India, mm-hmm. the sister India, you know, they want to see all the flaws and all the craziness. And I'm like, I want to I want to perfect my myself and be, you know, have this great Instagram feed of my life when that's not the reality. People want to be, they want to know who you are. That's how they buy into the business. Okay. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Just stop. Just stop for one minute. Hold on a second. (laughs) So you dropped like a hundred gems in five minutes or less, right? And uh, that was amazing. So I took away a bunch of things in there and I'm hoping that our audience, so this is the, this is the reason why we do this is one to bring awareness to the, to the entrepreneur, the small business owner and make sure we can support them. Right. That's number one. And that's why we do this. Right. But the, the bigger part is when you all come on and do what you just did, which is drop so many gems for our audience, because here's the deal. There's somebody who needs to hear this. There's somebody who's trying to figure out that first step. There's somebody who, right, needs the support of individuals around them. There are some people who need to understand that your family, your friends may not be the ones that support you and or do business with you, right? And you shouldn't necessarily be doing business for your friends and family. Now, it's great if they support it, but you should be looking at the general mass, right, for your business, right, to to drive revenue, profitably, that is. And there's so many other attributes that you that you shared in there to, to just go do it, right? Like you have to take that step and you took that step and now here you are, right? So those are, I mean, she dropped so many, I can't go through them all, but I just wanted to call some of those out. But now help me understand this because there's always a meaning behind this. Flavor Sweets. How'd you come up with the name Flavor Sweets? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got that name. Um, I made that name up a long time ago because it's kind of a play on words, right? Mm. Um, flavor, S-U-I-T-E-S. Flavor, obviously, meaning good food, great. You know, flavor to me means a lot of different things. It's, it's an atmosphere. I grew up in the 90s, so it's like crack mac, flavor in your ear. It's the whole flavor. It's, it's, a, it's an atmosphere. It's a feeling, you know? And then with the sweets, um, it's my business set up to where I have different um, divisions of it. Right. Mm. So I have um, mm. the catering division of it. I have a place where I have um, my cookbook division. I have um, apparel and I have different divisions and dimensions of my business to where I don't have to uh, just focus on one aspect of it. So that's how I kind of put the play on flavor sweets. So very nice. Very nice. I love that because there's always meaning behind, you know, the name. And sometimes we don't we don't know why. So thank you for sharing that with us. And obviously you have different lines. Here's the cool part about that is we talk about business. And I mentioned a little while ago, right? Profitable business, because that's the goal, not just to be in business, but to be profitable and to make money. And we talk about diversifying your portfolio of services as well. And you just drop that, right? Like, so the, your product lines, your catering and so on and so forth. So that's outstanding. So, so walk us through this. So you ended up deciding, right, to uh, go to breakfast and brunch route, right? Yeah. Um, I have to ask this question. What's your favorite? Like, what's your favorite breakfast recipe? Like, it feels like this is what I'm going to eat. If I'm going to eat this five days a week, what would it be? <laughs> I'm wondering. I would probably say if I could eat something every day, um, I would probably say uh, French toast and eggs Benedict. That would be like my favorite thing. Cause I like sweet and savory. Okay. And I love okay. eggs. So it's like, I like a little bit of both. I have to have sweet and savory period. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Now I'm hundred percent on the French toast. 
Definitely okay. definitely eggs as well. Not necessarily egg, egg Benedict, but definitely okay. eggs with it. So we're on the same page. I, that's that's real good stuff. Real good, real good. What do you, right. What's your favorite? What's your favorite? So, so I would do uh, French toast, scrambled eggs and cheese, some okay. green and turkey sausage. Okay, that's specific. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would do it just fine for me. All right? Good. So, uh, so we'll have to work that out at some point, obviously. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so with, with that being said, so walk us through, um, so who's your client today, right? So who's your, who's your client today? And then we want to talk about next steps for you and your business. So my client are businesses. Um, I focus my, my business on other businesses, um, whether it's barbershops, salons, um, mm -hmm. banks, um, the medical offices, um, community organizations, nonprofits, because I, Anytime you're having an event, whether uh, it's a business meeting, um, because I like to do um, uh, catering under like under 25 people, very intimate, okay. very curated, very um, uh, just really localized and small events that I can that I like to do. And that's my clientele. Um, anytime you're having a small conference, um, any sort of um, local event. And I like to also partner with nonprofits and other businesses and just the creatives too. Like I mm -hmm. absorb myself in the arts in Columbus. I okay. love to find out what's going on, whether it's a concert, whether it's a museum, whether it's um, a play, the theater, anything that's going on, a food truck and a fellow other chef that's having something. Let's go out and support. Like I, that's how I look at it. But my, 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 my main audience and my main clientele would be other businesses. Outstanding. Well, we need to talk about some other things. You know, our sister company is MILE, which is what stands for Make Your Life Entertaining. It's a social activity and entertainment platform where people can post all these events. And we actually have a food and bar category on there as well. So we need to we need to talk some more on some other things, it sounds like. Also. Okay. That'd be I, great. Like that. I like that spin, especially with, you know, what we're doing with you know, Columbus Makes Art in our artist segment, obviously, and in, in what you like to focus on. That's really mm -hmm. cool. That's cool. I love arts. I love music. I love art. I love, I mean, I am, that's one of the reasons I consider myself a lover of hospitality, period. Like mm -hmm. anytime that I see somebody smiling or enjoying themselves or like really being comfortable in my presence and making them happy, that's how I really get my um, joy out of. And it's, it's more than just making money for me. It's about really, really fulfilling my purpose. So I yes. really love all of that, that whole aspects of anything to do with hospitality and arts and all of that. Outstanding. Outstanding. That's good stuff. And that's a great space. I'm sure you look forward to us getting past this wave of COVID and getting back to live events and activities. I'm sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it has been a challenge. Yeah, I'm sure. So one of the things that we talk about, too, is like, what was the COVID impact for you and your business? Like, everything came to a screeching halt last year in March. So how did that actually impact you? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of my peers were hit hard um, with COVID. Um, yeah. And the, my restaurants, um, catering companies, fellow chefs, mm -hmm. it stopped business for a long time. And um, the word of the year for me was pivot, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us had to kind of find ways to uh, either rebrand, reinvent, find another stream of income. Mm. And um, a lot of, uh, a lot of it for me has been a lot of contactless deliveries okay. and drop offs and that kind of thing. Um, also too, like continuing to keep your face out there because what happened was this past year, um, this, your sc people's screen time has went up almost 500%. Right. So people are going on YouTube, they're going to Instagram, they're going to Facebook and people continuing to be visible on, on those platforms mm -hmm. was a great way to keep your name out there when there's things that go on. And you can also monetize on YouTube, you can monetize on different other platforms. So it definitely hit our community hard um, because we're such a high touch type of industry. Yeah. It was really hard to kind of, how do I make this to where I'm not servicing my clients face to face? So um, uh, some, some people were thriving in this industry, but others, for me specifically, um, it was, I always had a business model that I had yet to uh, execute. So for me, it was more of the, I have flavor baskets, if you will, and platters. So those things were things that I was able to kind of um, wrap up. I, I put the catering to the side and I just focused on my drop-offs, my okay. um, just kind of just doing things where I'm 
not reaching the customer. I'm not, you know, I'm not engaging, but I'm just still fulfilling orders and creating that platform and also doing online cooking classes. Like I know you have um, nice. Soli's Kitchen on Fridays. Yeah. That's a dope way to continue to keep your face out there because people want to learn. Right. And people are right. cooking at home and they want to know. So I think being a teacher online and everything, that's a great way to kind of capitalize on another income that you didn't even realize you may have had. That's right. That's right. So I have a question. Speaking of that, I was thinking about that a little earlier. Uh, is there any possibility of us probably having you on with Sully and cooking up a uh, little breakfast and brunch or something at some point? I would love that. <laughs> All right. Say so no more. Have, I think we have to make that we have to make that work. So we'll we'll figure that out real soon. OK, right? that'd be stand. great. That's what we do. That's exactly how it should work. So, yes. Uh, OK, so this, so let me ask you this. So, yep. Some pivot, some adjustments last year. Now, guess what? This thing is, you know, hopefully coming soon behind us, right? Vaccinations are out there. As you're looking forward to the, the, the rest of 2021, 2022, what are some of the milestones and goals that you have? Like, what are you looking to accomplish with the business? So for me, what I want to do is um, I really want to kind of activate the other streams of my business. Um, okay. I want to work mainly um, doing a lot of stuff online um, with my cooking classes. I want to finish my cookbook. Yeah. Um, I want to kind of teach and consult as well as catering as well. But I really want to kind of do things to where um, I can do things conveniently at my home. If, if something were to change, I still have things that are kind of floating. So my goals are pretty simple. It's just more or less kind of keeping those streams afloat. Yeah. and um, bring brand awareness to much as I can, as much as I can. And just learning too, like I'm, I have a lot to learn still, even almost a decade into the business, I have so much to learn and I, I just love learning and really trying to grow the business and um, experiment. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. So still evolving and still learning and growing, right? That's exactly. Cool. So that's a tip, excuse me, a gem, right? She just <laughs> dropped for all of, all of our listeners out there, right? So as an entrepreneur, you, you get it going, but at the same time, you're still learning, you're still growing, you're still evolving. It never really stops. Every day is a new and a different day. So that's pretty awesome. So thanks for sharing that, okay? So let me ask you this, right? So we talked about who your clients are. Um, how do they get in contact with you? So if somebody says, oh, I have a small business, got 10 people, want to get it catered, looking forward to it. How do they reach out and, and connect with you? Yeah, so you can... Um... You can, uh, my email is eat at flavorsweets.com. It's very easy. Very if you want to eat at Flavor Sweets, you can hit me up at eat at flavorsweets.com. That is so, awesome. So um, you could also find me on Facebook. I'm on Flavor Sweets Breakfast and Brunch, and I'm also on Instagram. Um, but yeah, just hit me up, and um, I love to, that's how you can get in contact with me. Outstanding. Pretty easy. Eat at yeah. Flavor Eat at right. Flavor Sweets. Okay, so that's how you all can reach out and connect uh, with India if you are looking to leverage her services. Um, so then outside of that, right? So a couple of things as we get ready to wind down, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you said, hey, there's one way that our community could support you, what would that one thing you would want us to do to help support you to achieve your goals? To support me? Yep, this um, is about you right now. That's what we're here for. Say, you know, um, the best way I can help me is by me helping you. So if you reach out to me for any platform um, to spread the word, um, if you know, if you think about breakfast and brunch, think about flavor sweets. Um, yeah. I mean, other than that, I want to be of service. So if there's any way that I can help in that way, that, and that's what I'm here for. So that would be really the only way that I feel like you would, that's, that's how I would get, you know, support, support, right. um, because a lot of times for me, when I look on um, social media or if I'm following people, even my peers, like I'm always giving out, I always, always cross promote and I always try to uh, build a network of referrals and people that I can go to and say, hey, I need this or look, I'm looking for that. And if I say, no, I can't provide that, I say, but this person can, or if you need this, this is how I do that. So mm. I really believe in like building a network of a community, even of my peers, because I can't do everything and I'm not going to do everything. And I have no problem 
with sharing that resource because um, that's how we kind of continue that thrive. You mentioned ecosystem with the black and brown community. Yeah. That's how we do that. And that's how we sustain because a lot of times we think about our, our industry, whether it's yeah. doing nails or doing hair or whatever it is that you kind of like a crabs in the barrel where right. you feel like you can't get help because you're doing that. But I don't believe in that. I believe in really um, building that community to where we can share and we can share resources and not feel like we're taking something away from us right. or ourselves. Right. There you go. She's dropping them left and right. I hope you're all paying attention, right? Got to get that mind right. Get that mentality right. Help each other out. Support each other and build, right? It was said earlier. I'm saying it again, twice in one show. We are stronger than, we're stronger together, right? So yep. then we are divided. So let's work together and let's build it. There's a big pie out there, y'all, and there's enough for all of us to eat, right? Everybody eats. That's the, that's the motto. But we got to work together and we can make that happen, right? We can learn from Absolutely. each other, support mm -hmm. each other. So awesome. So listen, I asked her, and that's what this is all about, y'all, is the Support Black Business Series. That's why we're doing this. And she's willing to help you all and support you as much as you can support her. So let's make sure we reach out. Um, eat at, eat at flavorsweets.com and check it out and let's support uh, India in her efforts to continue to grow her business. All right. So now with that being said, is there anything that we did not talk about, as I mentioned earlier, that you were like, when I go on a show, I'm going to say this, did we miss anything that needs to be said? You know, I did. I have notes right here. I'm like, I don't want to forget <laughs> nothing. Let's, let's go to those <laughs> notes. Let's see what you have for us. <laughs> um, I'd probably say, you know, I, I like to be an encourager and, you know, while you may get your start with friends and family supporting you, that may not be your end all clientele, as I spoke of before. So they may help you get your start, but if you have a high end product or if you have something that's really, really specialized, you have to really garner that clientele. And I would definitely say for me, honestly, um, you asked me uh, before what was my successes and my challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I would say definitely one of my challenges would have been uh, kind of like the work-life home balance. You know, okay. I do work full time. I'm right. a mother, I'm a wife and yeah. having, I have two children that are athletes between okay. going to karate and track. It's definitely a, you, there's no such thing as balance. Mm -hmm. And so I really kind of navigate towards, especially working mothers that feel like they don't know how to navigate all of that. There's, I like to look at it as a rhythm uh, to okay. life. When you have a rhythm and a flow to life, then you know, because balance is not, it's not equal. It's never going to be equal mm. when it comes to life. So really be encouraged about, you know, when you want to start something, know that you cannot always give it your hundred percent all the time, but there's systems that you can put in place to really help yourself. So if your audience is looking for like how to navigate that, I'm definitely one to kind of pull on if you are struggling as a working mother, even a working uh, uh, father or husband or whatever your situation is, we all have multiple roles that we play in our life. Right. And um, I definitely would feel like, you know, that's one of the things I definitely wanted to share with your audience, because a lot of times we don't always know where to start. And because we see like all the deficiencies that we have, we don't see that we really need your voice. We need who you are. We need what you have. And don't be afraid to um, to step out there. Outstanding. So listen, I'm I think that's it. That, I'm glad. There you go. I'm glad that you had that down and you wanted to share that. That is such an important gem that you just dropped. Um, you know, you dropped it early. You talked about like that first step and like, just go, let's to go do it. But then guess what? Once you do it, you have all this stuff going on. You're trying to figure it out. Like you said, especially from a female perspective, right? As a, as a mom and you're working full time, you got the business, you got the kids and they're active and it's a, it's a juggle, right? Like you said, it's not a balance, right? So you got all these different things going on. So thank you for sharing that because I know, I know guaranteed that resonated with somebody without question, 150%. So you are listening to this. You just heard that, right? Now, not only did she share that, right? So being authentic, as she mentioned earlier, being who she is, which is what people appreciate, but she even said, hey, you can reach out. I'll give you some wisdom on it, right? Because yeah. we have to help support each other. And then you never know how it benefits you. That's why it says better to give than to receive because it comes back tenfold, right? 
So thank you so much for sharing that because I know a lot of people need to hear that. Once again, you need to hit that like button and hit the share because somebody needs to hear what she just said, all right? So with that being said, any final messages besides that for our audience before we wrap up? No, listen, thank you, Kevin, for the opportunity. I love what yeah. your platform is doing. No, I just, that's all I had. And I just thank you for your time. Thank Absolutely. you for your audience's time. Well, it is a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for what you're doing in our community, being a part of the ecosystem and growing your business as well, allowing us to eat really, really well. And uh, I have to connect with you later on a, a situation too, right? Business-wise. So we'll, we'll uh, definitely do that. And uh, once again, everybody, I wanna thank you all for joining us. This is our uh, Throwback Thursday Support Black Business Series with our special segment with Artist Voice that's sponsored by Columbus Makes Art. And then obviously this segment by the Ohio Small Business Development Centers where you can receive free, uh, free uh, support in regards to their advisors. So if you need advisory services, you wanna reach out to the Ohio Small Business Development Centers at Columbus State Community College and check that out at our website. When you're on our website, make sure you go ahead and subscribe for our newsletter. That allows you to stay abreast of all these amazing episodes that we're having so you don't miss out. And then you wanna make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn, whichever is your favorite channel. We're on all of them. And that's how you'll stay abreast as well. Now, with that being said, we are about to wrap up. There are two messages that I wanna drop out there. For those of you that are on the East-West Corridor, so off of uh, Broad Street in Maine, I believe it is, there is a Link Us survey that we've been sending out. We want some information. They're looking at like a high-speed rail, right, to go in between or transportation. And we want those that are using those bus lines to let us know what they think. This is our opportunity for our community to share your voice. So if you hear this, I want you to go to our website. Once again, if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll receive a newsletter letting you know about that survey. And you can complete that. Or go to our social media channels, actually on facebook.com uh, to columbusblack.com, and you'll actually see the post with the link. That's the quickest way to get to it. Um, and then the other part is, uh, is COVID vaccinations, right? So with Franklin County, you wanna make sure, cause they're supporting us. We wanna make sure that you have the information, the knowledge that you need in regards to getting vaccinated as well. And with that being said, I wanna thank you all once again. India, I wanna thank you so much. Can't wait for us to reconnect and we'll go from there. As we always end our shows, right? In order to be more successful in your future, you need to understand a little bit more about your past. That's the reason why we just had Claudia in India. And I'm going to tell you what, we had a blast. And on that note, good night, everybody. I'm out. Have a good one.